Hey everybody, welcome to Harbin. This is the capital of China's northeasternmost province called Heilongjiang. And I've been here before, but it's been a long time. And I wanted to start today's trip here at uh, St. Sophia's Cathedral, Russian Orthodox Church built in 1907. I just remember from my previous trips to Harbin, I mean, every time I've been to Harbin, I've come here. Yeah, I know it's a tourist spot, but you can see this huge square. It's just good vibes. It's a great starting point for a day trip or something like that. See all these people out here taking pictures. And uh, it, it really is a great starting point. And also, one of my other favorite areas in Harbin City is the pedestrian street. It's got a really strong Russian vibe out there, and it's not far from here. So yeah, come out here, check this out, enjoy the atmosphere, and of course enjoy. This isn't a normal site in China, okay? I've seen churches around China, but most of them are dilapidated, and let's just say they're not really anything special to look at. They're kind of depressing a lot of the time. Most of the churches I've seen in China look pretty sad. But this one, you know, this is a piece of history right here. So this would be like 115 years old at this point. So yeah, I mean, it's just beautiful. And at night it really lights up. We're just gonna do some exploration. I'm gonna show you guys around. Harbin's a cool place. It's got a, a strong Russian history and not only Russian, but also Polish and other nationalities as well. But Russian is the main influence. And you'll see Russian on certain signs. You'll see Russian foods. We might even see some Russian people. I don't know. Probably not. We'll see. If we're going to see any foreigners, any non-Chinese, we would see them on the pedestrian street most likely. Or here. Everybody posing. Getting us photographs. Doing the selfies. Selfie stick. Doing the... That's not a peace sign she saw. That's a victory sign. Get it right. So victory, we are victorious. So far, I am the only Lao Wai that I've seen. A Lao Wai is one way of saying foreigner. And so I'm standing out like a sore thumb out here. Even with the mask, trust me. They can just see, they can just feel it, you know. Even from a distance, they can easily tell I'm a foreigner. I've had times where I've been wearing a mask and I've had my hood on and all that's exposed is my eyes and even from a distance they can still tell that I'm a non-Chinese. <laughs> it's amazing. This has been turned into a museum now and I will not be going in. I'm not here today for museums. I don't have enough time. I'm here for trekking. Boots on the ground, seeing the city. I'll show you these local snacks. You'll see these all over the Northeast. Fruits on a stick covered in a hard sticky candy. And I'll tell you, they taste pretty good, but every time I eat it, I feel like it's gonna pull my tooth out. So I don't eat them. They hurt my teeth. Kill pig dish. And that don't be a tie, it's northeastern cuisine. Don't know what I'm getting into here, but it looks cool. Wandering aimlessly in Harbin. Oh, that says that's a uh, martial arts training center. I really like that.
You know, there's a story to everything, and I wish I could know the story to this. So here we are at Zhongyang Pedestrian Street. I believe this pedestrian walking street is about one and a half kilometers. Anyway, I'm at one end. I'm just going to walk straight across. I've done this before, but it was a long time ago. And we'll see a bunch of cool stuff along the way. You never know what you'll see. This ice carving here. Just walk along and see what surprises you can find. And from what I understand, the most authentic Russian restaurant in town is on this street. I will be keeping my eyes peeled for that because I want to eat some Russian food today. I would say in China, the place where you would get the most authentic Russian food would be definitely in this province and some of the border cities like Heihe and Jiamusa. But Harbin, with its rich Russian history, it should have some pretty darn authentic Russian cuisine. So I'm going to check it out. Here's a snow sculpture. <laughs> Good place for family pics. The kind of cobblestone road. Really cool vibes here. Like I've been to a lot of places in China, a lot of different pedestrian streets. And I've got to say, this is one of my favorite ones in all of China. It's just really, really good vibes here. It's different, it's unique. A lot of things in China, whether you're in the north or south or east or west, a lot of things that look kind of similar, sort of a uh, cookie cutter. This is definitely unique. Here we are in a specialty good shop. We've got ginseng root. What's a Russian liquor? Oh, Russian bread. Stalling chocolates, that is awesome. Harbin is well known for its sausage. And this place is supposed to be extremely authentic. And they say it right there, authentic Harbin sausage. I'm not going to buy any though because I've actually had it several times. And it's, it's okay, but it's not that amazing. It's definitely not bad though. And if you look at these ice sculptures, they are pretty uh, intricate, you can see. Detail. I mean, I'm not usually really fascinated by this stuff, but when you can see it up close and you can see the level of detail that they carved it with, it, it is actually pretty impressive. That definitely takes some uh, skill and you know, a level of professional craftsmanship. I was walking down the pedestrian road and I saw a lot of people eating popsicles and I remember this, but I had forgotten, it's, but it's coming back to me now. So this apparently has been, it's got a long history selling popsicles with all these different flavors. And people are lining up out here for it. And then up here you got this little screen. I saw it earlier, it had the, uh, the pillars of Chinese socialism going across the screen. Here's a fake Jordan store. They call it Chiao Dan in Chinese. But that's how you say Jordan, like Michael Jordan. They would say Chiao Dan. Fake goods. A little bit hungry. I think I'm gonna get one of these big kebabs. These look pretty good. Be a good snack. For squid. That's squid right there. You see, you've got a lot of different things. I'm just going with beef. And here it is. A big long stick with some freshly grilled flesh on it. The little food stalls are actually made out of ice. 
And one interesting thing that I've not seen before is you can see these green ones. I use these for cooking a lot. Usually it's just fruit and stuff. These are spicy. These green peppers. They call that uh, Jira Gel. These are spicy. I'm, I'm not sure how that would taste, you know? All these other ones are fruit and stuff. And then you see those spicy green chili peppers. I will not be trying them. Good advertising idea. We've got a, an ice wall out here. And I got a, an actual fish frozen in, in the wall. <laughs> That's something I can say I've never seen before. Another fish. Underground crossing. <laughs> Baked sweet potatoes or roasted sweet potatoes. is the season of the Chinese New Year, the Lunar New Year, hence all of the Red Lanterns. Alright, well we have traversed the entire pedestrian street, we're at the end here, and I want to go show you guys the river. This is it, you all. We're at Stalin Park. Yeah, that's right. I'm not joking. Stalin Park. Stalin Park. Here we are. Interesting name, huh? And yes. It is named after that stall. It's just right here, Riverside. You can get a good view of the river. The frozen Songhua River. See what's cracking? Hopefully not the ice. <laughs> Play the laugh track. Here we go. Hello. Yeah, that's the river. People are paying admission and stuff to go in there, and I'm just not interested in on that you know i wouldn't mind walking across it if there's a place i could get in for free but i'm not going to pay to go walk on a frozen river Well, that's kind of frustrating. It was fun. A quick ride, but I, I was flying out there and the camera shut off after a minute, so I didn't capture it on video. So, sorry guys, I wanted to share the experience with you all.
I've looked and looked and walked and walked and I think I finally figured it out. I think the traditional Russian food, the authentic Russian cuisine I was wanting to get is here, which you can see, it's closed. <laughs> I've walked up and down the pedestrian street just searching and then I did a little more research. I found out it was near, it's supposed to be near that tower, which is the flood memorial. And uh, it says it's right next to it. Well, this is right next to it. And it says they were there for 30 years. The name had apparently changed. It was supposed to be called Katusha, but this is called Melanie Restaurant. So I will just have to find something else to eat. I'm just gonna eat anything because I'm pretty hungry. So you got these kebabs, and over here you've got stinky tofu, and I'm not touching that. Uh, Cho tofu. Uh, I, I don't do uh, stinky tofu, it's not my style. I tried it once a long time ago and I will never try it again. This is stinky tofu. Smells like absolute garbage. Some people love it, but I won't touch it. You know, I never thought I'd say this, but I'm here in China and I couldn't find anything good to eat out there. Literally. It was either, you know, a skewer, meat on a stick, fruit on a stick, or some other street food, and just, there was nothing good to eat. So here I am, almost embarrassed to say that I'm visiting the Golden Arches. It's Mickey D's tonight. That's, that's a shocker. I thought I'd find a lot of good food around here, but, I didn't. Yeah, so this is it. I didn't expect this to be dinner tonight. A Big Mac meal. But uh, I've got to say, the food situation here in Harbin is a little disappointing. You know, they've got their sausage and other northeastern foods, but I can get those in other cities and they're not really, uh, they're just not what I was looking for. I was looking for a good authentic Russian meal, but it looks like that's gone too, so. One thing that a lot of people do here that I don't really feel comfortable with doing personally is they leave their trash on the table. On the work that's going to it up. That's the custom here. It wouldn't be rude of me to do that. But I just personally, just the way I do that, the way I was raised, I just, no matter how long I spend in China, I just will not feel comfortable doing that. Well, to be honest, I didn't really expect to be here after dark, but I am. So I wanted to swing back by here and give you guys the night view of St. Sophia's Church. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was nice to get back out on the streets and just show you around. Traveling even domestically here in China over the past several years has been a nightmare due to the COVID regulations, but that's all over now. So I'm able to get out and do some exploring. So I really look forward to showing you all more of that in the future. And before you go, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up and drop me a comment if you want. And if you'd like to support the channel a little bit further, check me out on Patreon as well. All links are in the video description below. We'll catch you in the next video. Until then, xiaozi.